Hi folks, hope you're well. Uh, this video on fitness testing isn't going to look at how do we fitness test or which fitness tests are out there uh, that we can perform. This is why do we fitness test our athletes? What is the point? What are we getting from it? And why do we spend time fitness testing them? We're also going to look at the possible limitations of fitness testing in terms of what, what are the downsides of conducting uh, several fitness tests on our athletes. But first of all, we're going to look at the main reasons. And largely, there are four or five key reasons why we fitness test. So let's have a look at them one at a time. Okay, not in any particular order, but we're going to start with this one. One of the key reasons why we fitness test is we are trying to identify strengths and weaknesses. Total common sense, that one. Why am I fitness testing? I want to know where my performers are strong and where are they lacking fitness so that I can then start to put training ideas together to make sure that they are fit across all the key fitness components that they need to be fit in. So number one is to identify strengths and weaknesses. Now you think this would only be worth the same mark on the mark scheme, but it's not. So this is worth a separate mark on the mark scheme as well. What it allows us to figure out is or are our athletes starting level of fitness. When do you generally do your first set of fitness testing? Right at the start of pre-season. Your athletes have played all year or competed all year. You then give them a bit of free license. Off you go and enjoy yourself. And invariably they'll go off, drink a little bit too much, eat a little bit too much. Uh, compared to what they well definitely compared to what they w will do during the season so as soon as they report back for pre-season training you fitness test them where are you now what is your starting level of fitness so again we can start putting training ideas together and how to boost the fitness effectively now another reason some people will say some coaches will say oh I don't agree with this but we do do it we need to compare our athletes, our performers. You've got two people who play in the same position and they're both equally skillful. Who do you decide to pick? Well, it might be, or it should be, the one who's the fittest, the one who's going to be able to last longer in the performance. Okay? Sprint quickest. You don't have the highest levels of stamina so their, their performance doesn't fall away in the last 10-15 minutes of the game. So we do need to compare our athletes. But equally, compare my athlete, compare my central midfielder with an opposing team central midfielder. You know, If I want my central midfielder to dominate the opposition central midfielder, I need to know what the fitness levels are like of both athletes. So I know if that's going to happen or not. Okay, another reason why we fitness test is it provides motivation. Here's where you are, here's where you need to be, okay? So what it also allows us to do is set goals. So here's where you are, here's where you need to be, this is what we need to do in X amount of time, in the next two weeks, in the next four weeks, in the next six weeks. So it allows us to motivate our athletes but also, you know, motivate ourselves. If, I, if, if I'm if i a coach and I feel that that player isn't strong enough yet, I need to do something about it. I need to make sure that we target strength in their training programme. So that is another key reason why we fitness test. And finally, you might not think it, but throwing a few fitness tests in every now and again leads to a bit of variety. Prevents that tedium thing creeping in again. Okay, so it gives us a bit of variety in training, something a bit different. Because don't forget, even though we are fitness testing, okay, it is actually, fitness tests can be quite a good way to improve fitness as well. Doing a bleep test, you know, that's a tougher workout as you're ever going to get. Now, don't get me wrong, fitness tests are not ways to improve fitness. They are not training. They are testing. We are finding out how fit you are so we can see if our training is working. But some of the fitness tests are definitely a mini workout in themselves. So it also adds a little bit of variety to uh, the regular training that you're doing with your performers. Okay, so these are the five key reasons why we fitness test our athletes. 
What we now need to look at are what are the potential limitations, i.e. what are the downsides, what are the negatives to conducting fitness tests. Okay, so limitations of fitness testing, what are the downsides? Well, very often, fitness tests are generally, I've just used the word there, are too general, i.e. not sports specific. Think of it this way. Look at the Illinois Agility Run. Now you might remember, if I just try and quickly draw a mini version of the Illinois Run up here, it's going to be the worst argument in the world, folks, but you know, it's impromptu. It looks something like that. And what you do is, you run up and down, and weave in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and up and down, and we time your time to there. You tell me what sports movement or set play or set piece that movement pattern looks like in that top left hand corner. It doesn't look like any. You're never gonna do those types of movements in a in a game situation. If you do, I think your coach is gonna say, What the hell are they doing? So they are a little bit too vague. They are general. Yes, they do give us a fitness indicator, but like I said, very often they are not very sports specific. Okay, so what's another limitation of fitness testing? Well, as you can see, what's just appeared there, they don't replicate competitive conditions. Okay, now again, look at that Illinois diagram above. Where's the opponent? Where's the player trying to deny your space or trying to deny your time on the ball or something like that? There isn't anyone there. So again, it's that sports specificity thing. But the thing is, if you mention it's not sports specific, you just get that one point there okay mention it doesn't replicate competitive conditions you get a second point for doing that so there's a lack of competition in fitness testing okay you know you could argue that should you maybe then do it in a competitive environment where there's other people around you trying to beat your times and things like that maybe but you know, basic fitness testing is you you're trying to get your fastest times your heaviest weights your greatest distances but it does lack competitiveness. Now here's one with a couple of terms that you need to be aware of. Maximal and sub maximal tests. You might have heard of them, you might not, but you need to know them. Maximal tests are ones that are absolutely flat out. You have to work to exhaustion. The classic one there is, and this is something worth saying, you cannot say bleep test at A-level. You won't get the mark for it. You've got to say multi-stage fitness test, which is the bleep test, but that's its proper name. The multi-stage fitness test. Okay, That is an example of a maximal test. Okay, now that tests stamina, as I'm sure you're aware. But there's a submaximal test that tests stamina, and this one's called the Harvard Step Test. Some of you may have done it, some of you might not have done it. As I said, the multi stage fitness test is maximal, you have to work to your maximum. You have to work to exhaustion to get the data. The Harvard step test, you simply step up and down on a box for a set number of minutes. You don't break even to a sweat, okay? What you then do is, in effect, time how long it takes your pulse or your heart rate to return back to normal levels. And that gives you an indicator or indication of your stamina. Now, what are the limitations of each of these? Well, the multi-stage fitness test requires very high motivation because I've got to work to exhaustion it's a maximal test if my athlete doesn't work to exhaustion they aren't motivated to do it the test data is useless now if I come to the other step test that doesn't require motivation because it's dead easy to complete anyone can complete at any age but the problem is then you've got an issue of data that is lacking accuracy. The data that you get, because you haven't had to push yourself, 
The data that you get is very vague. It's used to predict your fitness. The data that you get from the multi-stage fitness test is going to tell us your stamina. Okay, the data you get for the Harvard step test is going to help us predict our stamina. But the downside to the multi-stage fitness test is it requires high levels of motivation to complete. You don't need that same motivation for the Harvard step test, but as a result, the data that you get is less accurate. So finally, that leads me on to another couple of key terms. So you've got maximal and submaximal tests. We've got one here, validity. You may have heard that from fitness testing a valid test okay what does it mean well do the tests measure what they are supposed to test i.e if i want to find out your strength am i doing a one rep max test if i am that is valid if i'm doing a standing long jump that is not valid because that isn't testing strength it's testing power so tests if they are selected incorrectly can often lack validity. I've got to check which components of fitness I want to test, and then I've got to make sure I select a test that does that. Now, I know that sounds a bit, well, duh, obviously, yeah. You'd be surprised how often that doesn't happen. You know, if I'm looking at flexibility in the shoulder for a javelin thrower or a shot putter or a discus, there's no point in doing the sit and reach test. Yeah, it's testing flexibility, but it's testing flexibility on the hips and the knees. That's not where I'm interested. I'm interested in the shoulder. So am I selecting a test that measures flexibility around the shoulder joint? If not, my test lacks validity. If I do select a test that tests flexibility around the shoulder joint, I have validity and that is good. And finally, 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 I'm going to look at one of the key terms that often goes with validity and that is reliability. Okay, and as some of you may know, that is basically, is the test repeatable? And if it isn't, the data that I've got is useless. A prime example from my own experience, this was me being slack and being useless. When I was at university, I made some um, lads that I was studying with do the multi-stage fitness test as part of my dissertation. I had to do it with them once, then do it again in four weeks' time to see if this intervention that I was trying on them had any had boosted their performance in any way. I mismarked the bleep test. It should be, sorry, not bleep test, multi-stage fitness test. As I'm sure you're aware, it should be 20 metres from line to line. I didn't measure it properly. I did it just over 18 metres because I was rushing around. Now, that rendered my results from that multi-stage fitness test as absolutely useless because the test wasn't reliable, okay? So yes, I'd selected the right test, so I had validity, but because I hadn't measured the lines properly, I had no reliability. So it's very, very important. If you want to avoid the limitations, you've got to make sure that you have validity and you have reliability. If you haven't, they are two big limitations. Hope you found this video useful, folks. Like I said, this isn't about how we fitness test or what we fitness test. This is about the benefits of it and the limitations.